So to set the stage, we're here in Cortland, outside of Cortland, Virginia. We're actually closer to Boykins, Virginia, and we're close to the border of North Carolina. But this is where Nat Turner's rebellion is going to take place in this general area. Some background on Nat Turner. He is born October 2nd, 1800 on a plantation close by here. He's very smart and his slave owner's name is Benjamin Turner. So that's where he gets that last name. And Benjamin Turner educates him, teaches him to read and to write and about religion and the Bible. He's sold several times after that. And the last time he sold, he works for, he's hired out to a John Travis who is actually very cruel. Turner believes he, he's getting a sign from the Lord when an eclipse happens in early of February of 1831. And that eclipse, he thinks, is a sign from the Lord to fight back, to rebel, to free his people. And then you have another atmospheric event that happens in August of 1831, and that's when Nat Turner believes God is telling him to act now. So the rebellion will take place on the night of August 21st, 1831. And he's going to get a group of enslaved together. I think it starts as a small group of men, about seven. But as they go to plantation to plantation and start to take out the white slave owners, they gather up more enslaved that help with the, with the rebellion. He will uh, avoid one house. And if you look at the map, you'll see kind of like the path they take. They avoid a kind of a close house because his wife, Cherry, actually lives there with his children. Um, she's enslaved there with his children. And he doesn't want any retaliation to happen to her. Or the rebellion lasts about four days. The white militias are brought in and federal troops are brought in. And it's quickly squashed. So I'm Jen of Walk With History, historian, museum professional. And I go to historic places and tell you why you should care. Why do they matter? This area of Virginia, if you get like two out of five people are actually enslaved. Two out of five people are actually owned by somebody else. So there's a lot of enslavement that happens here. There's still, you know, large plantation type fields out here even today. The numbers are skewed. They don't really know. They kill up to 55 to 58 whites. And then 56 are executed, including Nat Turner. Uh, and then three times as many, 200 people are lynched. When I say people, African-Americans are lynched uh, and killed who have no connection at all to raise the fear and to squash the revolt. They kill those people as a warning that uh, slave rebellions are not gonna be tolerated. The rebellion starts August 21st, that night. August 22nd at noon is when he reaches Rebecca Vaughn's house. They believe those are the last people that are killed. It goes on for two more days because he starts to march on towards Cortland and they hold up in a plantation home and the militia comes at them and they're holed up for those two days. So that's why it's considered a four day rebellion. But then Nat Turner is gonna hide out. He's gonna hide out until he's actually captured the end of October, 1831. And then he's gonna go to the courthouse in November of 1831 to start to stand trial. And I think a lot of people, when they learn about the Nat Turner Rebellion, get a little disenfranchised about it because they kill everybody. Women and children account for more than half of the people that are killed. And I'm talking infants as well. The first house they go to to kill people is the John Travis, the Benjamin Travis house. And as I, you remember, he's sold out, he's hired out, not sold, but hired out, because that happens to enslaved. If they couldn't be used on the plantation at the time, their owners could hire them out. And so he's hired out to John Travis, who is very cruel. And so the first house they go to is Benjamin Travis, a relation, and everybody's killed in that house. As they go from house to house, they gain more enslaved who join the rebellion with them and actually take their own agency upon themselves to fight back. And the, I think the, the good thing about Nat Turner, there's many of them, but one other thing is he dies free. He fights for his freedom. And even when he's uh, executed, he's executed for his actions that he did to fight back for his freedom. What's that donkey? Subscribe to Walk With History? Okay. <laughs> We're on the outskirts of Cortland, Virginia. We're here at Signpost Road. And that's the name that it was changed to in uh, 2021 because it used to be Blackhead Signpost Road. And we, there's a marker here to signify that because in August of 1831, after the revolt of Nat Turner and people were sent out to stop the revolt, 
about this conflicting stories, 50 to 55 white people were killed, but then three times the number of black people were killed. They say all the way up to maybe 240 black people were killed. And so the head that was put here at the end of this road to terrorize African Americans to stay enslaved and not fight back, they believe belonged to a blacksmith named Alfred, who was not implicated in any of the revolt. But because when the militias came out here, they just were just wiping through enslaved and black people. There's a sign here to remember that and to recognize that. Uh, again, the name was changed to kind of take away Black Head Signpost Road, but that's what this road was named. Now we're at Barrow Road. I see it right here. This is where the Rebecca Vaughn house was actually located, somewhere in this vicinity. So it has been moved from here, again, to preserve the history. But this is the area. I'm on the outskirts of the old Jerusalem city, now Cortland, Virginia. This is the area where the Nat Turner Rebellion took place. These are the plantations that the Nat Turner Rebellion took place at. I'm here in Cortland, Virginia, in front of the Cortland County Courthouse. This is the courthouse that saw the trial of Nat Turner. Nat Turner was held here from November 1st to his execution on November 11th in 1831. Originally, Cortland was called Jerusalem. When this city was first incorporated in 1791, its name was Jerusalem. It changed its name to Cortland in 1888. The Nat Turner trials were held here, and he was held in a jail that was on one side of this courthouse was the jail he was held in. During this time, from November 1st to November 11th, he will give his testimony to his lawyer, Gray and he will tell him everything. That is why this rebellion is so well documented, is because Nat Turner confesses everything. He tells everything that happened, almost in a way that was proud, but he wanted to tell the truth. Again, Nat Turner is religious. Nat Turner is considered a preacher. Nat Turner feels he was called by God to lead this rebellion. So he is forthcoming in everything that happened. There's a letter from the governor of North Carolina explaining the town of Cortland and what it looks like in 1831 during the trials. And he states that it's a small hamlet of approximately 175 people with only three stores, one saddler, one carriage maker, two hotels, two attorneys and two physicians. So we can assume that the attorney Gray is one of the two attorneys that they're talking about who defends Nat Turner. Now, I think he really was looking to get that confession and he will print that confession afterwards. That white church down the street there is St. Luke's Church. And that's where the white militia is going to meet on August 22nd. So one day after this rebellion starts to happen, the white militia will meet in that church and the governor will send troops from different federal locations, including Fort Norfolk, to help put an end to this slave rebellion. Right across the street from the courthouse is this Mahone's Tavern and Museum, and it says circa 1796. What's interesting about this tavern is this was here during the trial, and again, it's right across the street from the courthouse. And the person who owned it at the time was, it was Vaughn's Tavern, and what's interesting about that is when we go to the last house of the last white people who are killed, during the slave rebellion, it's Rebecca Vaughn's house. So it's, it's, it's a relation of the person who owns this tavern. Yet he does not allow the white militia to meet here. And he doesn't really, he over uh, charges people who are here for the trial. So it's a very interesting story of the person who owned this tavern. I'm sitting on the porch here of the Rebecca Vaughn house in Cortland, Virginia. It's on the corner of Main Street and Linden Street. And this is the new location of the Rebecca Vaughn House. It was moved here um, from its original location, which was five miles away at the end of a long lane off of Barrow Road. Now, this is the last structure that still remains of where whites were killed in the Nat Turner Rebellion. And it's now been moved off of its location on Barrow Road. It's been moved here. It's part of a museum to the Nat Turner Rebellion here in Cortland. And it hasn't been opened yet for that reason, but it will be. So there's a sign 
And I think these steps have been remade because they're pretty strong. But there's a sign out here stating that it, it's part of a, a work in progress. So you see right here. It's a historical significance in our county history, the last house on the ins insurrection scene in which anyone was killed. The county, the city, recognizes the importance of this event and trying to preserve the history of it. So again, we talked a little bit about the Vaughn who owned the tavern across from the courthouse. Uh, this was a relative and the last, they believe the last person who was killed during the insurrection, Rebecca Vaughn House. I'm at the corner of Bride Street and High Street here in Cortland. And you can kind of see the courthouse right over there. So not too far away, this is where they believe Nat Turner was hanged on November 11th. This is where he was executed. There's not much out here now. Tried on November 5th in the courthouse. He's convicted and sentenced to death. And then he's asked if he regrets what he had done. And he repeated, was Christ not crucified? So then he was hanged here on November 11th, 1831. And then his body was dissected and his skin and bones were taken as souvenirs. And that is not a rare occurrence in a public lynching execution of a slave in the 1800s. His skull, they believe now, is in the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. So what comes out of all of this is, you get the governor of Virginia who argues in 1832, maybe we should emancipate the enslaved. Maybe we should take them back to Africa. Maybe this is not going to stop. But instead, what happens is you get pro-stiffened slavery laws. But then you're going to get people who fight back. The American Abolitionist Society gets started in 1833, two years later, and you're going to get uh, Great Britain will start to outlaw slavery starting in 1834. So they, their reaction is that they don't see this stopping. and. It just needs to change about 30 years before the Civil War will start. But this is starting that spark. Enslaved are going to fight for their freedom. They're being treated inhumanely. They're being murdered and raped. And they are fighting back. They want their families. They want their lives. They want their safety. They want their health and they don't want to be owned and they're going to start to fight back and people will start to see this as very wrong. This is the area where Nat Turner starts his rebellion and his rebellion is ended. But as I leave here, I just think about how this pushes anti-slavery to the forefront of American politics. And Nat Turner refused to abide, he listened to the signs, and he took his agency upon himself to fight back. For people like Nat Turner, who take these American ideals, these American values, and know that freedom is not free. You must fight for your freedom. I'm proud to do the story about him today. I'm proud to bring him to you. These locations were not easy to find, so if you're interested in getting a map of these locations, Join our Patreon page, and these maps are available to you. But I hope that you learned something today. I hope you think of Nat Turner differently. And um, I just hope that we all remember that it takes a fight sometimes to uphold the values of America. On to the next Walk With History.